In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to model masonry walls in RESA 3D. We'll start out by drawing a masonry wall using the draw wall panels here. So we click on the icon and it will ask here to draw any type of, of wall we have. We have masonry, wood, concrete, and general. We're going to choose masonry. Uh, there's a material set and design rule and we'll come back to that. I'm going to push apply and I can draw on the drawing grid behind here. So a zero, zero, zero is the location. I'm going to go up ahead and draw a 14 foot tall hot wall. I'm going to click on that point. I go across and click on another point here. I'm going to go all the way to 20 feet. And then I'm going to drop the last click here at 20 feet in zero location in the X direction here. And I right click to drop the tool and now my wall is drawn. So a wall has to be rectangular, um, but you can draw any four points to create that. I'm going to double click on the wall and I see here that this is this wall now is giving me a rendered wall. If I click on the rendered button I get to see there's a drawing grid behind there so I can see uh, the drawing grid and I can change this drawing grid to the right here. This drawing grid allows me to enter in any number of increments. Um, if I just say one that'll be a one foot increment. So I'm going to go ahead and do the one foot increment on that. And In the wall panel editor the things you might want to do is add openings so I'll go ahead and draw create a new opening opening. So I'm going to create a door opening in here and in the lower right corner you can see it's describing the size of this opening. It gives me the dimensions and then it also gives me the coordinates. Uh, let's see and I'll also just draw in a window opening here. So right click to get rid of that tool and now I have my openings in place. The next thing I want to do is add a boundary conditions. Boundary conditions should be added within the wall panel editor uh, for walls so I can tell the program it's going to be a fixed and it automatically pulls fix there and I apply and all I have to do is just click on the anywhere on the bottom of this wall and it creates a boundary condition. Lastly I'm going to do is create the regions. So the design regions there are created for you in the model. If you click on design regions you can see here we can label these design regions um, and what design regions are is their entire re full height regions here are going to be the ones that we're going to be designing for reinforcement uh, to take the shear in plane to take out of plane. We also have regions above and below openings and we can make decisions about whether we want to transfer the loads above and below that openings or whether we want to design those openings uh, for reinforcement as well. And we'll do that in the design roles. But this is going to be our design regions and that's really what we're going to be looking at when we look at design. So we say OK. And the next piece here is to address those design rules for those regions. So I'm going to go into here the wall design rule. We'll see the first uh, checkbox th is the unity check. This just tells the program what we want to allow our pro our our wall to go up to for unity. So in case we have don't have all the loads yet, we might want to not let it go all the way up to 100%, um, but we're, we will let that go to 1, which is 100%. We could have dropped that down. Uh, the masonry wall tab here is going to be what we're going to be concerned about. This is where we determine what size of a wall this is. So this can be a 10 inch wall, uh, whether we want it to be partially or fully grouted. Um, if we see partially grouted, the program is going to optimize that grouting based on the reinforcement required. Um, this checkbox is telling the program we need reinforcement. And then we can also determine the way we're calculating the wall area. I'm going to go into the masonry in plane and here you to tell the program what size bars you're going to be using. So number five bars are what are we've got here consistently. So we'll leave number five bars for this wall. Um, the boundary zone here is going to be the edge of each region and that's going to be the in plane, um, so boundary zone. So as we apply loads in plane, that boundary zone is going to be on each side of that region and the program is sizing that boundary zone based on the demand. So it's going to start at 8 inches and go up to 40 inches as required. Um, so that should be about two cells there. That makes sense here. 8 inches will be probably our first uh, attempt. And unless we have high demand, that'll probably be what we end up with. Uh, we'll see. Then we also have horizontal bars. We can tell the program that we want to amplify the shear for high se seismic. Um, and then here's a checkbox to tell the program to design those uh, upper and lower above the window openings, above the door opening, transfer the load. Otherwise, it's going to be designed there. So um, we'll leave that checkbox off. So it is not going to transfer the load. It will just it will design that reinforcement above and below the opening. 
go to masonry out of plane. So in plane and out of plane is what we're referring to here. Um, we see that we also have number five bars. The program will size the bars as needed um, based on the uh, the demand here out of plane. So we have eight number uh, eight inches on center versus all the way up to 72 inches on center. The program will either place it in the center or each face. I'm going to say each face. Um, and then you can say each face equally or staggered. I'm going to go ahead with just each face. Um, and then you can also, again, decide to transfer that load if you don't need it um, in the opening area. Um, the, we also have the lintel design here listed, so you can tell the program what size bars to be using for that lintel, um, and then the depth of the lintel. Okay, and then I'm going to close that. And so next piece here is to add some loads. So we'll go ahead and see. There's a lot of different ways you can add loads. First of all, you can just apply a distributed load to the wall. So I'll go ahead and just say that we'll do a point uh, 100 pounds in the negative direction, so downward uh, 100 pounds per running foot um, on top of this wall for dead load. And I can just click on the top of that wall to create a vertical uh, downward force. We can also do things like apply joint loads. So joint loads can be a number of things. We can apply joint loads anywhere in the model. We can say it's just be a negative two kips in the vertical direction of live load. And I can say this is going to be right at a joint. Now those are joints at the ends. I can also add joints to our wall. So if we want to add some joints and do it along the distance of the wall, we can do that. So I'm going to say that this next wall one is going to be at maybe 15 feet and 14 foot high. And there's a joint there that allows me to add a joint load there. I also can just do it along the distance of the wall. So it doesn't have to be uh, maybe 10 feet and we can say that that's going to be at 8 feet tall. You can see that there's just a point there. So I can apply joint loads anywhere in this. It can just be along any joint as long as it's in the plane of the wall. Uh, the next thing I can do is surface loads. So surface loads are allow us to do anything on the wall here. We can tell the program it's going to be wind load. So we're going to be going into the page with a capital Z direction. That means it's the global axis. If we look at our global axis, that means we're blowing it into the wall. We can say a start location of zero. It doesn't have to be full height. We could stage this up a little bit. So let's say this is 10 feet uh, that we're blowing uh, into the page here. And we're going to say maybe 20 pounds uh, into the page and say apply, click on that wall, and I can see here I've got a, a wind load at that wall. Maybe that's a wind load. We could have tapered it. Um, it could represent any kind of soil load, things like that. So I'm going to render this really quick, and we can see here it's applying this directly to our wall. Um, and then next piece here is to create a load combination. So if I go over to load combinations here, I see I have a variety of load combinations. Let me just uh, start here one more time. So I'm going to delete mark lines and I'm going to go ahead and create. I have a, a long list from the load combination generator I can pick from. This is going to be ASD design and we'll say this is 2D only and it would be reversible. So I'm going to create those. One thing to check is to check your codes in your global parameters to know which code you're using here. We're using the ACI 530 2013 ASD. So that would match up with our load combinations. I'm going to go ahead and say solve the batch and envelope. It runs through the entire analysis and then it gives us some results. Um, so we can see some wall panel design results here. If we go to the masonry in tab, we see this is the in plane results in tabular format. We have a masonry out of plane showing us all the information, the unity check, the share unity check, um, all of the, the allowables, and then we can see our lintel. But really to understand that further, I'd like to go to the detail report. So click on the detail tab and then click on the wall itself and we can see the different re regions of design that we have inside of that wall. Um, and we see here the in-plane results from the top right corner. And we, it gives us an information of the all the criteria and the parameters we placed in that wall. It gives us a combined check for both the area for the uh, for the actual masonry as well as for the steel. So we see two different types of co code checks. We see the shear checks. We then also see the moment and shear diagrams with the axial. And then scrolling down below that, we see the governing re uh, design here for our bending checks, our shear checks, and gives us the reinforcement. And lastly here, it gives us that, um, that 
a boundary zone and we're saying that there's one uh, number five bar placed in that boundary zone for eight inches. So we, we can jump around and we can see out of plane as well. So the out of plane results here, since we're, we are blowing wind on this wall uh, out of plane, we see that we have the reinforcement here on each face. So we're going to be getting results listed here. Um, we have a, again, the axial checks and the bending checks and this is all going to be slightly different here. You have kip per foot listed versus the other diagram here. So you then see our reinforcement is just number fives at 72 inches on center. So it's a lightly loaded wall. Um, but this is per region. So you can also see that there's things like each region is going to be designed differently. If you wanted to double check which regions were what, you can go back to the reinforcement uh, design here on your wall panel editor. You can quickly turn on your region numbers. So you see R1, R4, and R6 are the full height ones. Uh, the other ones are going to be the, the, just above and below the opening. So maybe R4 and R6 are the ones of also concern. Uh, we can take a quick look at those. So R1, R4, we see those here. Um, same, the higher loading in those R4 and then R6 is that end one. Besides the uh, the reinforcement design here in the detail report, you also have the opening design. So we see here the lintel is shown here. We have a lintel over each opening. So you have two openings in our model, L1 and L2. And we're going to see all the code check information for the lintel, the shear summary and the bending summary. We see the moment and shear diagrams. Uh, gives us, again, the reinforcement shown here at the very bottom with some of the code check information.